to the retired U.S. Army General Wesley Clark next, NATO's top military commander from 1997 to 2000. He's with me from Little Rock in Arkansas. Um, General Clark, when, what do you make of the situation now? I mean, there's a week to go. And as you will have heard, essentially the packing up operation has to start almost any time now if, it's, if everybody's going to get out safely. So evacuations will dwindle. I mean, what do you make of the current situation? Well, I think first that the uh, militaries of the United States, UK and other allied countries have done a pretty good job of getting in there, um, given a really tough mission and getting people out. But I think, um, as the previous uh, analysis showed, you're not going to get everybody out that wants out. You probably have two to three million Afghans who want out. You have a, a Taliban uh, organization, if you can call it that, that's not really in charge of the government. The government's basically shut down right now. So the Ministry of Health's not working. Um, there's, a, a, there's been a big drought. Farm production there, wheat's probably down by 40%. This is an economy that's relied on foreign aid and the sales of opium. So what do the Taliban have to work with? So what you ex can expect is a major humanitarian catastrophe. When the G7 says there's going to be a roadmap, there probably will have to be a roadmap. Is the UN going to go in there and provide assistance? Is it going to be monitored assistance? Are we going to give it to the Taliban or distribute it directly? And if we distribute it directly, who's going to organize the logistics for that? So there's a lot of unanswered and unanswerable right now so, questions about this. But what we do know is we've got roughly 40 million people surrounded, locked in their country. The Taliban says they can't leave and probably two to three right. million really in jeopardy. How concerned would you be? Now, that as the U.S. goes, uh, what you want to avoid, of course, is any remaining Americans or any other nationality to its individual government, uh, just that America tends to sort of have the biggest voice, uh, becoming a hostage. That, that in the future, anybody left in the country, I, 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 you know, Iran comes to mind. I'm old enough, as, as indeed like yourself, to remember to, or, or all of that. But um, how worried would you be about that? I think there's a likelihood that any remaining Americans could be identified and could be held hostage. Right now, we don't, at least as far as I know, we don't have a really good accounting for all of the Americans that are there. So presumably people have cell phones, they're calling relatives. I'm hearing all kinds of reports in the United States about private efforts to get people out. There's a real scramble going on, but um, as the days go by, Will somebody from the Taliban see some Americans and say, I want money, I want respect? Uh, I think there's a high likelihood of that. General, look, the one thing I, it's difficult to understand, that with all the might of the U.S., with all the cruise missiles, with all the hundreds of thousands of soldiers, and same with allies, that they can't just look the Taliban in the eye and say, we are going to complete this in a short order or else be prepared for something to rain down on your head. But they can't say that, can they? Well, I guess you could, but it would be an open-ended military operation. And one of the basic principles we've always preached is have a political objective in mind. What is the objective? I think you could go to the United Nations. I think the United Nations could conduct the, the um, work with the Taliban and figure out how to get some of these people out. I think they could use the leverage of potential financial aid to the Taliban. But do the G7, does the United States want to do this? Do they see the need for this kind of a strategic reset right now? Apparently not yet. It may, it may still come to that, um, or it may come to simply a forceful extension, using force to remain there an extra week to get the rest of the Americans out. And don't forget, we can do hostage rescue. We could go in and, and rescue people if we know where they are, what the circumstances are. So the Taliban have to be a little bit wary here of the United States, and they mm -hmm. should be on their behavior to us if they want that government to survive. So we've heard from Jen Psaki on President Biden's meeting 
with the G7. Uh, forgive me, I'm just seeing it myself for the first time, so I'm going to look down and read it. He made it clear with each passing day, we've added risk to our troops with increasing threats from ISIS-K and the completion is on pace and on course, currently on pace. If you were commanding now those forces there, what would you be doing? Well, I'd be getting the, the mission done to get the troops out. I'd have a contingency plan with um, reaction forces ready to go against ISIS if it raises its head. And um, I'd be prepared to uh, ask the commander in chief for strikes if necessary to maintain the safety of our troops and the uh, security of the mission. General Clark, very kind of you to take his time. Thank you. I appreciate it.